participants and uh, also I invited uh, Dr. Pasan Jai Singh, is the community physician and the head uh, of the municipal health department, Candy, and he had he did some assistance to preparation of this uh, uh, journal club presentation, and uh, he will be joining with us today. I invited him, and uh, so I invite Dr. Noni to start the presentation. So thank you. Uh, thank you, dear madam. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, I'm going to uh, critically analyze an original article with you all. Uh, the title of uh, the article is, uh, as you can see, effect of levity recitime monotherapy on homocysteine metabolism in children with epilepsy, a prospective study. So, uh, before starting uh, of uh, with the critical appreciation uh, appreciation of the journal article, I'm going to give you a brief overview um, about the homocysteine and uh, complication of hyperhomocysteinemia. So, uh, I think you can see the slide. Uh, so, as you can see uh, in this diagram, it can give rise to cardiovascular CNS and uh, many more effects. Uh, so, uh, it has been found that uh, long-term uh, treatment with uh, all the anti-epileptic drugs like uh, carbamazepine, sodium valparate, uh, phenytoin may lead to hyperhomocysteinemia by affecting the blood concentrations of folate, vitamin B12 and vitamin B6. Uh, the mechanism which leads to this seems to be uh, the liver microsomal enzyme induction by the drug uh, and influencing the folate metabolism. So uh, in next slide, uh, you can see the uh, diagrammatic uh, summary of homocysteine metabolism. Um, Uh, having said that, uh, next I would like to uh, give a brief introduction about the journal uh, which I have extracted this article. So the name of uh, this uh, journal is uh, uh, Journal of Clinical Neurology and uh, it is published by Korean uh, Neurological Association and uh, it is an international uh, peer-reviewed journal. Mm, and it is indexed in uh, uh, many known sites like uh, uh, Google Scro uh, Scholar and uh, PubMed. Uh, the impact factor of this journal in 2022 is uh, 3.1. Uh, the title of this article is, uh, as I said before, a short, uh, short and long-term effect of levetiracetam monotherapy on homocysteine metabolism in children with epilepsy, a prospective study. Uh, so this uh, article published on 2019 April, and there are seven authors, uh, and this study was done at Greece. So here onwards, I'll be uh, critically analyzing this article according to the uh, STROP guideline. So uh, what is STROP guideline? The STROP uh, stand for strengthening the reporting of observational studies in epidemiology. Uh, and I will be uh, discussing uh, things according to this guideline hereafter. 
uh, if I uh, talk about the title, uh, uh, it includes a research question. It reflects uh, aims and objectives of study, and is, uh, it uh, but it uh, doesn't contain the study design correctly. So uh, it has only mentioned as prospective study. Uh, I think it should be uh, uh, corrected as prospective cross-sectional study. Uh, so uh, let's then move to the abstract part. Mm, I think you can see uh, the abstract here. Uh, if I analyze the abstract, uh, it is uh, well structured and informative and meaningful and also gives the summary of entire study. That means uh, background, method, results and conclusions. Uh, as I said before, study type is not completely mentioned. Also, uh, uh, word, uh, they, are, uh, they have mentioned a word as study population, but it should be corrected as study sample. Uh, also, it would have been better if uh, mentioned about limited contradictory nature of available re uh, research uh, data. Uh, then I'll pay my attention uh, over the keywords. Uh, uh, you can see uh, keywords uh, down here. Uh, they have given children, epilepsy, homocysteine, uh, liver trace dam. So, uh, these keywords uh, most are taken from the title and uh, they make uh, article search easy. Uh, uh, next, I'm going to summarize the introduction of the article. So, uh, Long-term treatment with uh, some, they have mentioned that long-term treatment with some older antiepileptic drugs may lead to hypohomocysteinemia. And the levetiracetam is a newer broad spectrum antiepileptic uh, agent whose effect on homocysteine concentration remains unclear. So they also had mentioned, has mentioned that uh, there are very limited and conflicting data on the effect of levetiracetam monotherapy on fasting plasma uh, total homocysteine levels. Also, uh, they say that elevated or normal homocysteine uh, levels are in, uh, after initiating uh, levetiracetam treatment has been found in few adult studies. Uh, but recently, the only cross-sectional study in children found that the homocysteine concentration was increased in uh, two children. Uh, so uh, uh, in introduction, uh, as the purpose of study, uh, they have mentioned that to uh, prospectively determine the short-term and long-term effects of a levetiracetam monotherapy on homocysteine metabolism in children with epilepsy. Uh, so uh, if I analyze the introduction critically, Introduction is uh, meaningful and built in existing literature uh, and also presented logically with opening body and termination. And also all citations were followed with correct references in the list of the references. And uh, importantly, research question uh, was stated. Then uh, let's uh, move on to the method. Uh, method, uh, the study type is prospective cross-sectional study. Uh, duration, uh, it has been conducted over 12 months. Uh, here, data collection has been done at a uh, baseline uh, to 6 and 12 months. Uh, 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 start, uh, 12 months of liberated STEM monotherapy. Uh, the study sample is uh, 32 children with new onset epilepsy uh, receiving levetiracetam monotherapy uh, uh, for the new onset uh, epilepsy. And the uh, mean age is uh, 5.94. Uh, 
and the age range is 1 year to 15 years. Uh, and 18 uh, males and 12 females were there. Uh, then uh, they have mentioned uh, uh, inclusion and exclusion criteria. Uh, inclusion criteria are uh, patients with new onset epilepsy, uh, patients only needing levetiracetam monotherapy, uh, patients uh, who uh, were, uh, were not on any drug for uh, another disease and patient with patients with normal growth, liver and renal functions. Uh, the exclusion criteria is uh, one, they have mentioned one exclu exclusion criteria, uh, that is patients who needed another anti-epileptic drugs. Uh, while uh, uh, on the course of treatment. The study variables are uh, which uh, they have used are uh, I have categorized into uh, three uh, types. They are independent, dependent, and confounding. De independent variable uh, uh, variables are uh, duration of levator receptor time monotherapy. Uh, that is baseline two months, six months, and uh, one year. Dependent variables are uh, fasting plasma homocysteine levels, uh, serum vitamin B12 levels, serum folic acid levels. Uh, confounding variables are age, sex, and sex, gender, and BMI. Uh, so I think uh, you can understand what are the dependent and independent variables. So um, uh, I thought to elaborate uh, more on confounding variables. So uh, what is the confounding variable? So uh, the confound uh, the confounding variable confounds the true relationship between two variables. Uh, as uh, as the example, although uh, levetiracetam don't uh, cause uh, elevation of homocysteine, uh, age related increase of homocysteine may reflect as if it caused by homocysteine. This is a hypothetical situation. This may be true or this uh, may not be true. So uh, in method, uh, serum folate, uh, serum vitamin B12 and plasma homocysteine were, uh, homocysteine were measured before uh, 2, 6 and 12 months of levetiracetam monotherapy. Levetiracetam was prescribed at a daily dose of uh, 10, uh, 10 to 35 milligrams per kilogram. Uh, dropouts due to the need uh, for other antiepileptic treatments and missing data reduced the sample size to 25 uh, patients at 6 months. Uh, and 18 patients at 12 months of uh, the treatment. So uh, now I am uh, moving to the data the data analysis uh, part of uh, the method. So uh, here they have used uh, several uh, statistical tests. Uh, so uh, has used uh, Wilcoxon sign rank test uh, to assess the significance of parameters at a baseline and after treatment with le uh, levetiracetam therapy. Mm. So if I am to talk about uh, this test, uh, this this is uh, this Wilcoxon sign rank is, is used to uh, uh, use for the non-parametric test to compare two related pairs of groups. Here, uh, if two groups are 32 children before starting, as an example, 32 children before starting uh, levotricetam and 32 children after two months starting levotricetam. Uh, comparing variable is homocysteine levels. So uh, correlation analysis measures degree of association between two variables. Uh, variables. So here, uh, Spearman's correlation coefficient is used to um, analyze the uh, correlation among among all parameters and between the parameters and the levity recitam dose here. Then they also have used a regression based analysis of covariance and core test. Uh, so uh, uh, this has performed to assess the potential effect of confounding factors such as age, sex, BMI, and levetiracetam dose on the, uh, on the association of parameters uh, evaluated with uh, the treatment. 
uh, if I am to say uh, something about uh, ANCO artist, uh, it uh, examines the influence of an independent variable on dependent variable uh, while removing the effect of the uh, covariate factors. Uh, they also have used a post hoc test uh, using a Bonferroni correction. Uh, here, uh, when we try to check several hypotheses uh, from same data test, there is a uh, chance we can get some of them falsely positive. That is a type one error. Uh, this test allows for the uh, comparison of several variables to avoid uh, false uh, uh, data appearing statistically significant. Uh, uh, if I analyze the method critically, uh, I think the study design is appropriate for the research question and period of recruitment and follow-up is mentioned. Also inclusion and exclusion criteria were uh, mentioned and uh, analyst, analytical methods and preparations were clearly mentioned for homocysteine vitamin uh, B12. So uh, this is very important uh, uh, in case of homocysteine, uh, this is really important because it is very highly labile analyte and pre-analytical errors can change entire findings of study. So uh, this is the uh, method they have used uh, to collect samples, store, and analyze uh, homocysteine. They have mentioned homocysteine vitamin B12 and uh, serum folate. They have mentioned the analysis, uh, the method uh, of analyzing the analytes also. Uh, uh, the sample is uh, representative of a population. Uh, but sample size seems not adequate. In inclusion criteria, renal liver functions was only considered. Uh, I think this may be due to liver and renal failure causes uh, cause increase uh, plasma homocysteine levels. Um, locations uh, where study was conducted has not um, been mentioned here, but it was mentioned initially. Uh, in inclusion and exclusion criteria, dropouts are not defined correctly. Uh, actually, dropout means uh, only missing data, but uh, not the people who were removed from the study uh, due to need of uh, starting another drug. Uh, also, uh, several complex analytical concepts are used uh, in uh, data analysis. So, uh, this, uh, they might have used uh, them due to change in nature of sample size over the duration of study. Uh, now I'm uh, going to move into the results. Uh, so uh, they have uh, given the uh, table of results uh, after analyzing data using uh, Wilcoxon sign rank test. So here, uh, plasma homocysteine was significantly decreased at uh, two months of treatment. Uh, P-value is uh, 0 0.031. Uh, the statistical significance is uh, P-value less than uh, point, uh, 0 0.05. Uh, then uh, they have also uh, analyzed uh, data using ANCOA test. The ANCOA uh, test really revealed statistically significant decrease in plasma homocysteine at two months. Uh, significance uh, p-value is 0 0.013 and six months p-value 0 0.015 of uh, levator acetam treatment after controlling for age, sex, BMI, and uh, dose. Uh, so uh, among the confounding factors, only age was found to be the borderline, signif borderline significantly associated with the plasma homocysteine, uh, associated with the plasma homocysteine increase in 12 months of treatment. Uh, that is p-value 0 0.052. There, uh, whereas there was no significant association with sex, 
uh, or levetiracetam dose uh, in 12 months. So uh, post hoc test using Bonferroni correction, uh, this, uh, this uh, was used to assess the potential for type 1 errors when performing multiple statistical tests. But uh, the finding uh, uh, of this test has uh, mentioned that findings are not significantly uh, altered. Uh, so if I am to uh, critically analyze the results, uh, so number of participants at each stage of study was mentioned and reasons for non-participation was given, like starting on another epileptic drug. Uh, all data are presented in tabulated and uh, manner and uh, for tabulated form and titled properly uh, and has presented in comprehensible manner and uh, results are based on aim of the study. Uh, in the start of, uh, of the research description, study sample has not uh, described, like uh, with, um, according to uh, age, sex, and BMI. It is maybe due to uh, too small sample size. Uh, results of Sp uh, Spearman's correlation was not mentioned here. Uh, then I'm going to uh, move into discussion and conclusions. Mm. Uh, so uh, discussions and conclusions. Uh, was made according to analysis of data. Also uh, uh, has raised a new uh, research question, uh, has discussed about limitations of study. Uh, that means uh, uh, the limitations uh, of the study uh, given was a small sample size, uh, not analyzing um, uh, vitamin B6 levels. Um, also, uh, those are the limitations and, uh, uh, has discussed about other, uh, studies, uh, both supportive and uh, contradicted, uh, which has supported and contradicted findings. Uh, they have mentioned, uh, uh, three, uh, studies in here, the, uh, at the start of the discussion part. Uh, two uh, two are uh, adult studies and uh, one is a cross section study uh, uh, done in children. Mm. Uh, so as the reason for the uh, rise of plasma homocysteine in twelve months of uh, after twelve months of duration was attributed to the uh, participants being older at the uh, uh, at, at the time of point. Uh, but uh, as far as uh, in our textbooks and uh, our literature, there are no age specific ranges uh, which will change uh, in this manner. I mean, in yearly manner for one year, uh, in uh, age of two, age of three like manner. Uh, we only have uh, reference ranges for uh, adults and children like. Uh, so, uh, if they uh, did direct comparison of homocysteine levels with duration of levetiracetam monotherapy, the statistical analysis would have been more simple. That means uh, without uh, adding um, uh, and compare comparison with age, sex, BMI, and uh, gender, if uh, simply these two uh, were uh, compared, so uh, statistical analysis would have been uh, simple. Uh, also, outcome would be more uh, obvious and easy to understand for the reader. So these are the references uh, which used uh, in this uh, article. 
and uh, i would like to conclude my critical appraisal uh, from this point so i would like to welcome uh, any questions from you all, if you have Thank you, Noani, and uh, it's a yeah, it's a, a great start for the general club. Uh, so you've done a wonderful job, and uh, for the critical appraisal. Uh, so what we wanted is to create the culture that the trainees have a, uh, that a open mind for the journals, and when you go through the journals or when you are planning for a research, when you do the literature survey, when you find the journal articles, and how to go through them and cut, how to do the critical appraisal. So I think uh, this start is a uh, very good uh, opening for the discussion. I think uh, uh, the trainees must be having questions for you to any clarifications. So it's open for the questions. Gulani, may I thank uh, you and Dr. Person for helping Nuani and encouraging her to uh, carry out this uh, first uh, journal article appraisal actually. We were also not very sure whether this is going to be a good one or not. Uh, actually, I also must thank Noani for taking the challenge and while traveling from Chirau every day. <laughs> I think she was doing most of them while she was traveling in the inside the train. So thank you, Noani, for everything. Thank okay. you, madam. One question. Uh, what's your opinion? And about the validity of the results? Uh, uh, validity of results means uh, if we talk about the validity, so uh, we can talk about the uh, internal validity and external validity. So uh, mainly uh, if you talk about internal validity, uh, we have to think about uh, the mainly the methods uh, we have uh, used to analyze uh, mainly uh, like uh, homocysteine um, b2l like uh, methods we uh, used to uh, generate our results so uh, whether they are reliable or not uh, uh, on this reliability uh, validity develops uh, so also when we are applying uh, this uh, research to um, like external world, uh, I think this is not sufficient. So um, this is only we have we have generated an hypothesis uh, that um, this drug is good or this drug is bad. So uh, uh, to validate more, it should be compared with um, another group. Like uh, we have to compare. Uh, patients with levotiracetam monotherapy with uh, another patient group uh, who are taking um, another drug like sodium valparaiso, carbamazepine or something. So uh, by comparison, comparison only, we can um, develop the validity. Uh, so um, I would like to uh, take um, uh, any further clarification and uh, any opinion from uh, uh, Sir Dr. Pasan uh, Jayasinghe, the uh, consultant epidemiologist, sir, if uh, he's willing to. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, you know, really, uh, this is a very good presentation. Uh, and uh, you have done an, excellent, done an excellent job regarding this critical appraisal. Uh, there are uh, some positives and negatives also. Uh, but uh, in overall, it's a good presentation. And uh, in this, regarding to this question, in validity uh, means uh, there are two things, as you mentioned, is correct, internal validity and external validity. But uh, finding something through uh, research, uh, there should be some opportunity to uh, implement those in the target population or somewhere else. Uh, by in this uh, research study, uh, let's say only very limited sample, and uh, the findings are uh, based on non-parametric tests. 
I know you don't know what is non-parametric tests. Usually, they are applying a parametric, the statistical test names, parametric say they are a, their power is more high. In non-parametric tests, they are considered as a lower power test. So uh, the implementation ability of these findings to general population is very minimum uh, regarding this kind of researchers and uh, this kind of findings. Only we can uh, got uh, the hypothesis. We have to do another study uh, or some studies, several studies to confirm that whether we are going to accept this hypothesis or reject. That's when null hypothesis accepted, null hypothesis so null hypothesis rejecting like that. This is the same. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Navani, for that wonderful presentation. It's a very good initiative uh, for this general club. And I would like to thank the College of Chemical Pathologists also for the initiating this. Uh, I would like to know uh, whether there are any considerable biases associated with study. Uh, yes, uh, definitely. Uh, there are uh, several uh, types of uh, uh, bias factors are associated with st this study. Uh, First one is, uh, I think, selection bias. So here uh, we have only um, taken uh, 32 people uh, with liver and monotherapy without any like uh, randomization. So if we are to um, uh, do uh, randomization and um, uh, gather uh, more people, it uh, would have taken uh, more time. Um, and uh, that is a limiting factor. The other uh, bias is um, analytical bias. So uh, as uh, all of uh, we know, so by analyzing this uh, like homocysteine levels, folate levels, B12 levels, we don't know whether they have uh, uh, repeated the uh, values of the particular sample and taken the means or not. So if they have not done that, uh, there is a analytical bias. Uh, we don't know, it is not mentioned here. So that also uh, will uh, in, uh, influence, uh, can be taken as bias. Other uh, bias factor is, can be um, said as uh, attrition bias. That means uh, the non-static nature of the uh, sample size. That means at the beginning of this uh, uh, study, there were uh, 32 participants. Then at the middle, uh, it has, uh, become uh, uh, 20 something and then at the end it was only 14 so uh, eight, total 18 participants were lost so uh, we don't know if these 18 participants were uh, in the study uh, how will affect it to the home system level uh, it might uh, change the uh, change even the uh, the final results of uh, the study also so if they are results also go, uh, gone hand in hand with uh, this um, existing participants. So it may not have uh, influenced study, but we don't know what if uh, their home system values are very high. Uh, so means uh, will be change, changed. So uh, uh, it will uh, adversely affect the outcome of study. So that's uh, the thing I have to say about the bias. Uh, give me some times to add uh, about this answer. In this study, uh, the attrition bias, this bias is the mainly concern thing and uh, main limitation because uh, at the end of this study, 43% of the participants have been lost. We don't know whether they have uh, withdrawn from the study or are there any clinical decisions uh, to uh, exclude their people from the study or any other things. If we think uh, those 43 people, their findings are um, uh, more contributable for the final conclusions. In uh, Usually in doing this kind of follow-up studies, we are, uh, this, uh, we are analyzing some kind of a survival analysis like that. You may be, uh, sometimes you may have heard about that. Uh, they didn't do this kind of things, but it will be a little difficult uh, a sample with less than 30 or like that. And then the other thing is if we uh, we are we should try it to minimize those attrition less than five percent. 
you may ask uh, in several studies, there is a p-value less than 0 0.05 uh, thing in the research. If, if the, percent, uh, the, the attrition percentage less than 5%, we can exclude those attritions that means a loss of follow-up things for the final outcome. In this study, 43% lost. So it is a major limitation for this study. Thanks. So I think uh, as Thank you, Noni. Uh, my question, uh, you mentioned about that BMI and the confounding factors yes. are the limitations in the mm. results interpretation. Mm. Mm. So any other suggestion you can say if that would have been better to improve the results of this study? Oh, my God. Uh, that... Uh... Uh, to improve the, uh, I think you are again asking about validity, no? So, uh, to improve the uh, this validity of this result, uh, we have to do actually analytical studies uh, comparing groups. So, I think uh, that is the way to improve the study. So, uh, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, uh, the, for improvement of this study, main thing is uh, this study limited to a one particular uh, well demarcated study group. There is no comparison in this study. That means that you are giving uh, some drug to particular patients, and uh, uh, but uh, you have to uh, conclude that this drug is good but uh, not compared with other drugs or people with uh, not getting uh, any treatments or like that. In uh, the main suggestion to improve this study, uh, do a comparative study. That means the with the uh, or type or any other type, uh, comparative study to compare with the people. That means a similar study sample who didn't give any drug or give some other drugs and compared with the, uh, the laboratory stream, uh, those type of drugs. Okay, uh, that is the main uh, suggestion, uh, concern suggestion from my side uh, to improve uh, this uh, the, 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 the study area and this study. Okay. And attrition and other minimizing biases we discussed earlier. Thank you, sir. And, uh, thank you. And uh, Dr. Pasan, any suggestions for the future journal clubs to like to improve these presentations and the selection of articles regarding that? Yes, uh, uh, thank you very much. And uh, I'm very happy to have you for <laughs> to joining with this session. And thank you very much, Dr. Dulani and other team for inviting uh, me to participate and uh, actively know with this uh, general club and other things. And uh, first thing is that this is a very, very, very good journal to be discussed. That is, uh, uh, at the very beginning, uh, you are, the criteria for selecting articles uh, are much appropriate. And uh, thank you very much for you all to select in this kind of articles. In uh, according to my experience, uh, most of the time, uh, the clinicians are selecting articles. They are having uh, good clinical uh, importance or so relevant to their study, but uh, there are very minimum uh, details uh, to discuss regarding the research methodology and analytical and research side. So, uh, the, doing, doing the, the uh, critical appraisal guidelines, Strobeo, Consorto, any other several things are developed to improve the, the research methodology and the, the, the research aspect, the validity biases and uh, minimizing biases, so like that. So this in this uh, article, uh, there are so many things to be discussed in, in that regard. I don't know the chemical pathology side, how, what is the importance of, uh, of 
homocysteine and those drugs and other things. There's a your side then, and uh, this is the please keep these uh, criteria for selection of uh, journal articles uh, and uh, that thing. And the next thing uh, I want to uh, mention that uh, please uh, the, do not uh, bother about or do not uh, uh, yeah, experiencing and this discussion with the Noni and other things to prepare in this present also presentation also. I, uh, uh, but that uh, there are some uh, kind of reluctance or some fear about those uh, statistical analysis and uh, research methodology types in uh, usually we are seeing uh, in our curriculum also uh, the research methodology is a very a little bit uh, bitter subject area but uh, thinking uh, simply being uh, in most of the time in this article also, there are so many complex statistical methods, but ultimately we develop some hypotheses to be tested. If we use some simple analytical methods uh, and also the finalists are end up with the developed hypothesis for is tested later. And uh, like that, uh, so uh, you don't have much idea about the research methodology and the statistical analysis. So, but uh, if you understand, it will be a little bit easy. There are only four study types. Uh, and uh, in as a pathologist, or like that, uh, the mostly cross-sectional studies are the things most uh, usable for you. So you can study those things well. And uh, so uh, uh, you can uh, get a lot of improvement. Uh, we are selecting uh, study uh, designs. We have been used uh, on the uh, cross-sectional studies, case controls, and cohort studies, not the experimental studies. The, if we uh, critically appraisal first as a experimental studies, most of the time we are uh, experiencing that uh, people discussing experimental studies in general clubs, but uh, very uh, uh, there are very limited knowledge we can gather from the experimental designs because uh, there are so many complex studies. So ultimately the session will be ended, but we are getting nothing. So take simple studies to discuss so we can learn a lot from those things uh, because uh, students and trainees can understand first without any uh, support. This is the research or other things. And the final thing I have to mention that the, in the, in the we have in Sri Lanka, the clinicians have so many data. The pathologists are the most uh, lucky specialty. Uh, they, we are having a passive uh, high number of data sets and uh, so easily if you know the methodologies and you can uh, get much outputs and uh, it is more suitable for you and as well as the country and uh, the analytical methods if you want some kind of these trainings and other inputs to doing those things we are as community physicians and we are very like to help with you and uh, join it with you and uh, any okay, those are the things I thought that. And thank you very much again for inviting me to join this. And uh, for your any thing, I am ready to help you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pasan. And uh, are there any questions or suggestions for the general club today? I just want to thank Dr. Pasan Jasing uh, to uh, volunteering to help us. So it's a, it's a positive uh, boosting thinking and it's encouraging us to do. So we'll see in the future if we can get help from you. Thank you very much, Dr. Pasan. Welcome. In the absence of any more questions, shall we wind up the session? Are there anybody to talk in the audience there in the LRH auditorium?
then other my suggestion dulani yes you know, yeah uh, with the if any uh, each and every uh, journal club if we can include some uh, one of the statistic person to involve in the discussion it's very helpful and we will get some idea about that uh, test that are used in that particular article you just a brief discussion on that also adding those and also it helpful for the trainees and as well as for the consultant yes yeah, sure we will try if dr pasan jaising is available we will be uh, asked for his help and uh, yeah we will try As we are about to conclude this discussion, uh, on behalf of College of Chemical Pathologists, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Pasan Jaya Singh, consultant epidemiologist, uh, for guiding us for preparing this uh, uh, or journal article and a statistical appraisal. And I would uh, like if uh, uh, Sir can help us in future journal clubs search. And uh, I, uh, then I would like to thank Dr. Iresha Jasinghe, consultant chemical pathologist, for selecting this article and uh, guiding us throughout this uh, discussion. And uh, for do Dr. Nuwani Jayasinghe for her excellent presentation today as first journal club. And for the all participants who participate uh, physically and also uh, as Zoom participants. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. We will meet in the next session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dulani and the team and uh, LRHT. Thank you.